Welcome to another edition of the Inside the Locker Room Podcast Show. My name is Ron McFadden. I own a college freshman and the Math Catholic High School alumni. I'm here with Elijah Ware. Elijah, how you doing today? Ryan McFadden, I'm doing great. Ready for this basketball season to get started in full swing. Yep, yep, yep. And mm-hmm. it should be starting next week, uh, through, uh, this upcoming week, with college mm-hmm. basketball. NBA is already in full swing. Yeah. High school starts in December. Mm-hmm. But on this podcast episode, we're going to be talking about the University of Maryland basketball team, a team that's, I believe, in, entering a new era of Maryland basketball, oh, where definitely. in the past where they really struggled, and now we have seen – Especially last year, how this team revived the program. Yeah. And looking at last year, let's take a look at what happened with University of Maryland, University of Maryland basketball team last season. They went 28-7, and had a 14-4 record in the Big Ten Conference, which is second best behind Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. They had key wins against Wisconsin when they were number five, the fifth-ranked basketball team in the country, Michigan State and Iowa State. But they did lose in the NCAA tournament to West Virginia. Yeah. They had... Amazing, amazing year from Des Wells, who, who graduated from the Maryland. But Melo Trimble, his freshman year was amazing. Led mm-hmm. the team in scoring. You had Jake Lehman. All he those had guys a big year too. had a big year as well. Now, going into this season, they did lose Des Wells, but they got a lot of key players like Melo Trimble, mm-hmm. Jake Lehman. Those guys are returning. They got a lot of newcomers. With um, Start off with Diamond Stone, the freshman. Five star center out of Wisconsin. Yeah. Then you had um, you got transferred from Georgia Tech, Robert Carter. So this team is going into the season as the third best basketball team in the conference, and I believe in, in the country in the country. In the country. So what do you think of that? Uh, I was looking for them to actually be ranked number one, but mm-hmm. I can see why. You know, I can't be too sure, especially about Maryland. You know, because they haven't really been this highly ranked in a while now. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess they just give it to Kentucky because, you know, that's the norm nowadays. Yeah, it is the norm for Kentucky, but this team really has the potential. Yeah, of most definitely. Being you got Melo Trimble. Melo Trimble. Robert Carter Jr. I really like him. Yeah. 12 points and 11 rebounds in the scrimmage. Yeah, um, and speaking of, yeah. also talking about Melo Trimble, um, Bishop O'Connell alumni, excellent play, basketball player when he was in high school. Mm-hmm. Like I said before, led the Terps in scoring last season, and he is ranked the fourth best player in college basketball according to ESPN mm-hmm. top one hundred top one hundred college basketball. What do you think ranking. about his? What do you think about his draft stock? How do you draft stock? Oh, gosh, Will I, he, I think I don't know how ready, how much of an NBA type player he is. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure about. We'll NBA. see. We'll see how he develops yeah, this summer. I think this year. This year will be. I decides how mm-hmm. his draft stock is. Honestly, I would like to see him play another year in Maryland. I know it's too early for that. I'd love to see him play three years there. Yeah. Because they got a lot of key uh key recruit and Anthony Cowan coming yeah. in. But for Melo, right now I saw on Draft Express he's I believe a second round pick mm-hmm. in the draft. One thing he's a great great scorer. But remember, NBA draft to me is all about potential. Of course. So when teams are picking out players, they're going after the young talent, young yeah, freshmen. Those 18, 19-year-old yeah, guys. So they can develop them. But, yeah, Mellotron was a great player, mm-hmm. a great shooter. I think he needs to pass the, for a point guard. I think he should pass the ball more. I yeah. believe only average four assists a game. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I really don't mind the way – if he average, if he can average anywhere from four to four to five, maybe six assists, I'm okay with that. He does His assist numbers doesn't need to be too high to me because – the talent on the team, everybody can get theirs, you mm-hmm. know. Everybody can can generate their own offense for the most part, especially at the college level. So I believe if Melo's doing his thing, then that's just going to open up lanes for everyone else, and he doesn't really have to create as much. You know? And you, before we got to talk about Melo Trimble, you were talking about Robert Carter, yeah. transfer out of Georgia Tech. I really like him. Tell me why, why do you like him and how he will benefit this University of Maryland basketball team. I think he's just a tenacious rebounder. Mm-hmm. Nice big body, you know. Like I said, he get a lot of rebounds. He had 11 rebounds and not too many minutes in the scrimmage, you know. And I think he's gonna he's gonna be that glue guy to the team. Mm-hmm. That not maybe not the best player, not the most flashy player, but I think he's gonna be that guy. That if he's gone, you're gonna notice it. When he comes out the game, you're gonna notice. Maybe not not so much a drop off because I believe our our bench is gonna be okay this year, but. He's just going to be that guy that you need, that emotional leader on the team. 
And one thing about Robert Carter, that's a good big down, guy down low that's going to help out the team. And another yeah. guy that's going to help the team down low is freshman Diamond Stone. Most this guy, like I said earlier in our podcast episode, he's five star power, um, um, five star power four slash center. Potential first round pick, maybe a potential lottery pick in the draft. McDonald's yeah. All American. I believe he, they say he lost a lot of weight during the off during the off season. Back in high school, he was a number two center according to Scout.com, and he was a great great scorer down low. And he also is good at stepping back and making that fifteen foot jump shot. Mm-hmm. And one thing, let's I want to tell you something about um, his game in high school. His senior year, he averaged twenty four point six points per game and eleven point eight rebounds. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. That is really good yeah. for a guy, and that's going to help him. And um, for Stone in the scrimmage against Southern New Hampshire, where Maryland won 91 to 55, mm-hmm. he scored 16 points and five rebounds. So, and it's not his official debut since it was just a scrimmage, but yeah. he's definitely a talent. He's definitely yeah. a talent. And you saw it right there. Yeah. You saw it right there with the 16 points, five rebounds, and a, you would say, his unofficial debut. Yeah. But Maryland fans got to see. What type of player? And like you said before, this is a new era for yeah. Maryland basketball. Oh, you can see the definitely. you can see the difference in just the type of players that that they're going after, the type of players that they're starting to get. Yeah, and the know? mentality of exactly. the team as well. It's um, just a new era, and it's it's exciting because everyone wants to compete for a national championship. But even Coach K real, realized that if you're not going after these top talent players, then you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to compete. So that's why Kentucky's always there. That's why Duke's always there. Kansas, you know, teams like that. They're, they're always going to be there because they're getting the best talent. And, okay, if you're going to be a one and done, we're going to use you until we don't need you anymore. You can always come back, but we're going to use you until we use you up. And one thing about Maryland, this is, for me, an interesting basketball team to watch. Mm-hmm. All right, we already got the Kentucky. We already know about them bringing in high, high-level high recruits. You got your Kansas, a historical basketball program. You got your UNC Chapel Hill. Mm-hmm. We already know about what they're capable of. Duke, uh, but Maryland. This is a, like literally thing it's about it's the University of Maryland. <laughs> you know what? It's been a long time since this team had this much hype yeah. going into a season. This is like I remember younger. I'm starting to get into a more Maryland basketball now. But when I was younger, I just watched bas- college basketball in general. Mm-hmm. I really didn't have my favorite team. Mm-hmm. But this is especially for the area. This is amazing that we. That Maryland Georgetown game, that's yeah, gonna be that's big. gonna be a good game. That's but gonna be big. Thing about Maryland, <laughs> this that area in Maryland, state of Maryland, Georgia, actually got a basketball team that has the yeah. potential to bring home a national championship. Mm-hmm. And the last time they actually done that was in two thousand two, and that was a time with Juan Dixon, Steve mm-hmm. Blake. Mm-hmm. So this is gonna be um, Ollie Baxter. Yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be a great year for the Terps. And I want to pinpoint some key games I'm looking out for. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we got. The season starts November 13th against Mount St. Mary's, but November 17th they play Georgetown. Yeah. And it's been our Mark Turgeon said that that game's possibly is going to sell over 100,000 tickets. Wow, that's a lot. 100,000 tickets. Too bad I'll be so, up here in New York. Right. I can't. We'll see it on TV. Yeah, we'll see it on TV. <laughs> but we'll see it. one game I really want to pinpoint is the game on December 1st against North Carolina. Yeah. Number one ranked, going to see number one ranked. I think that game right there. Old-fashioned ACC battle. Yeah. <laughs> will show how good of a team Maryland is. One thing, I think on a point guard side, I think um, Melo Truman had the benefit with Marcus Page's injury. Yeah. They probably Nate Britt was probably sliding. Yeah. But them. maybe it depends they on. They probably had some battles, too, back in the day yeah. in high school. Pretty sure. But honestly, it depends on how Marcus Page heals because – his injury is a three to four week span, so he may return before that game. Mm-hmm. But I would love to, I can't wait for that Maryland game yeah. against UNC Chapel Hill. That right there will show how good if this team is literally legit. Yeah. And then we also Chapel Hill is ranked number one. Yeah. Number one. And then we also can't forget their conference schedule: Wisconsin, Michigan State, Michigan, and all the other schools. Yeah. But this is going to be one incredible year. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting Melo Trimble to have a big year. Honestly, to me, he surprised me last year. I you always seen like there's always you always got that one talent that comes into the league. Mm-hmm. I mean, excuse me, come to the um his first year playing college basketball, and he's be like a star, yeah. like you saw in Jaleel Okafor. But Melo Trimble, really a guy from the WCC, 
playing Bishop. Great score when he was in high school, but I did not expect him to do what he did yeah. last year. I mean, just like I'm pretty sure uh, – Diamond Stone's going to have a big freshman year, I just think like so. Melo Trimble. Yeah, because Melo Trimble did too. the same thing, lost about 20 pounds before his freshman season. Diamond Stone did the same thing. Maryland, it's all about conditioning and making you a better athlete. Because every if you can you can play basketball, they're, they're going to fine-tune everything. They're going to polish your game. But all these guys can play basketball. It's just about taking more of a business approach to the game and being the best athlete you can be. With this team they got, with, before we close out this segment, with the team they got now, with your Diamond Stone, Melo Trimble, Jake Lehman, Robert Carter, what's your prediction for them going to going to the season? Uh, I mean, my, my prediction may be slightly biased because, you know, I'm from Maryland, big Maryland fan. So I'm going to go as far as to say national championship. Winners of the national championship, and I, it's not it's not far fetched, obviously. So we'll see how the season goes, but that's what I'm. That's the goal, and I'm pretty sure that's their goal too. I'm predicting that I'm predicting they're gonna be first place in the conference, the Big Ten conference. I think they're gonna win the Big Ten conference championship. Mm-hmm. For me, I would love to see a championship, bring um, go to, compete in the national championship. It's kind of right now. It's hard for me to make my prediction. One because. March Madness, the tournament is is yeah. so unpredictable. Anything, you know how like, it happens at Georgetown every time yes. they're in the tournament. So it's so yeah. unpredictable, but this team has the capability capability in doing it. But I would love to see Maryland back in the national championship, representing yeah. the state of Maryland. Yeah, because these New Yorkers up here, they yeah. hating a little bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that wraps up that wraps up our podcast edition talking about University of Maryland basketball. Be sure to follow Insider Locker Room on our blog site, InsiderLockerRoom.net, and follow us on Twitter at Locker Room 2015. Also, be sure to follow us on SoundCloud. SoundCloud, excuse me. We just created that account. We're putting all our podcast shows on SoundCloud, mm-hmm. so be sure to give us a follow on there. A follow on there. So, I'm Ron McFadden. Elijah Ware. And we are out of here.